Hi, year 12. This is Mr. Lim here again on our fourth video on redox. Okay, it's about disproportionation and self indicating redox reactions. Hopefully, a bit of a shorter video. Okay, so we're going to be learning about disproportionation and self indicating redox reactions. We're going to be able to define disproportionation, list some common ones, and some common self indicating redox reactions, and why we use them. Okay, so. Disproportionation reactions. Some substances can undergo both oxidation and reduction. These substances are said to undergo disproportionation. So that means when the sample of itself, so you've got like 100 molecules of this one thing, some of them will undergo redox reactions with other molecules of itself. Okay, One will undergo oxidation and the another will undergo reduction. So if you have 100 molecules, you might have 50 undergo oxidation and 50 undergo reduction. Not all of these reactions are spontaneous, but a common disproportionation reaction is the hydrogen peroxide uh, reaction. Okay, so hydrogen peroxide can dispro undergo disproportionation to form oxygen gas and water. So let's go through that. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Okay, let's write out the balanced half equation. First of all, we know it's going to form oxygen gas. Okay, balance out the non-hydrogen, non-oxygen, none there. Balance out the oxygen, balance, balance out the hydrogens. 2H plus, balance out the electrons uh, by the charges, zero on the left, positive two on the right, so therefore we have extra two electrons here. Okay, that's one of them. Next, is, that's, is that the oxidation of the reduction? It's losing electrons because its uh, electrons are on the right hand side, so therefore it is a oxidation. Okay, whereas you've got your uh, reaction that also produces water. Okay, again, no non-hydrogen, non-oxygen. We balance out the oxygens, two of those. Balance out the hydrogens, two over here. Balance out the charges, two over here. Okay, so that would be um, a disproportionation reaction where the hydrogen peroxide, one substance, undergoes oxidation and reduction oxidation and reduction at the same time. Then when you combine these, okay, so you notice that they both uh, gain or lose two electrons, so we don't have to multiply anything, right? You would combine them to form 2H2O2 plus 2H plus goes to O2 plus 2H plus plus 2H2O, right? And you notice that the uh, hydrogen ions can be cancelled out. So you don't need those, and that's what you end up with as a disproportionation reaction. All right. Um, so that's disproportionation. Now we go to self-indicating redox reactants. So some substances, when undergoing reduction or oxidation, change color due to the reactants being one color and the products being another. These substances can be used to indicate whether a reduction or an oxidation has occurred. All right. So similar to the idea that indicators for acids and bases you have your weak acid form and your conjugate base form. Um, they are different colors. Same thing here. One of the reactants, uh, the reactant product and the, the reactant and the product are different colors and therefore when they undergo that change, it will indicate that that change has occurred. All right. Um, two common substances that will undergo reduction and thus indicate whether the other substance has undergone oxidation. All right. So these are, uh, oxidants, right, are the dichromate ions, um, which is used in a solution of sodium or potassium dichromate, and the permanganate ions, used as a solution of sodium or potassium permanganate. And both of these substances only work if they are acidified, which means that they have some acids added to them. Why? Let's have a look at them. Okay, so let's have a look. The dichromate ion, Cr2072- goes to chromium, 3+, plus. okay, and so therefore, you have um, balance out the chromiums to here, balance out the oxygens, seven waters here, balance out the hydrogens, 14 H plus is here, um, and then balance out the charges, six electrons on this side over here. Okay, so that is, um, that is the dichromate one. Okay. What colors are these? If you look at your data sheet and you look up the negative ions, this one is orange and this one is green. So when orange solution turns to green, 
of this stuff, you know that it has the other substance has undergone oxidation and this has undergone reduction. Okay, why does it need to be acidified? Because you've got these hydrogen ions there, otherwise it won't work. All right, the other one is the permanganate reaction, which is the MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus. Okay, plus four waters plus eight elect. Uh, plus eight hydrogen ions plus five electrons okay what colors are these again this one is purple and this one is pale pink and effectively it becomes colorless okay um, and so therefore if it goes from purple to pale pink you know that that oxid uh, that reduction of reaction has occurred and the other substance has undergone oxidation okay so how would you do this? So how would you? Uh, so these things can be used as indicated substance that undergoes oxidation and can be used to identify substance. So say you have substance A and substance B. Okay, and so you know that A will oxidize, but B will not. Okay, so if you were to try and do a chemical, if they look the same, and you need to do a chemical test to identify the difference between them, so you say, okay, I know that. If I add a bit of this self-indicating redox reactants, the dichromate or the permanganate, um, then when I add it to both of them, A will cause a change in color and B will not cause a change in color. Okay. So what you do is you take a, a sample of A and a sample of B, and then you add a tiny bit of acidified potassium dichromate or potassium permanganate, and the one that is A will change color, the one that is B will not. All right. Why do you have to only add a very small amount of potassium dichromate or potassium permanganate? Okay, because if you only add a small amount of A or B to a large amount of uh, your indicating reactant, uh, then what will happen is that a little bit will change, but not all of it. All right, and so you really want all of it to change so that you get that color change. Otherwise, it's going to be masked by all the other ions that of that original color that are there. All right, so you need to have uh, the other substance, that's the A or the B, that's reacting with the um, the indicating redox reactant to be in excess, otherwise it's just not going to work. All right, and that's that, uh, disproportionation and self-indicating redox reactants.